Now, one of the things that we absolutely are sure of as well is that gluten induces nutritional deficits and many of these nutritional deficiencies um, that gluten can contribute to are linked to cancer. And this is, again, this is more instead of a causal relationship, it's more of an indirect relationship because, again, gluten can cause nutritional deficiencies. Now, many things can cause nutritional deficiencies. Poor diet, a process, highly processed food, overconsumption of alcohol, overutilization of certain prescription medications. These are all things that can cause nutrient deficiencies, but these deficiencies specifically have been studied with a correlation and relationship to the development of breast cancer. So we're, we're, we're certain, I mean, magnesium, one of the impacts here is it can lead to hormonal dysfunction and disruption that can put the odds in favor of the development of cancers, including breast cancer. Um, we know that magnesium as well, one of its functions is it regulates blood sugar and it regulates how well you break sugar down into energy. And if you don't have adequate quantities, you know, one of the things that we know is sugar feeds cancer. This should not be a mystery if you're new even if you're new to this show, this should not be a mystery. We've known that for years. This is why it's so disgusting to me when you go to these cancer walkathons or marathons, and you've got uh, you know, you know, you've got the um, the booths there, and everybody's donating money and time to do this. But what are they selling at these booths to raise the money? They're selling Coke, right, and cookies and donuts, it's just, it's just absolutely disgusting. If you're ever at one of these cancer walks and this is what they're throwing at you, I would just encourage any of you that are there at those walks to really um, raise hell. You know, let them know it's not okay to say you're fighting cancer while you're selling things to promote cancer. To me, it's an oxymoron, it's, it's, out, of, it's out of control at this point and, and we know sugar's bad for us. So again, anyway, I'll get off that rant. We're talking about magnesium. Um, as being a regulator of blood sugar, magnesium being a regulator of hormone balance, including estrogen, and so very, very important. If the body gets adequate magnesium uh, in the relationship to the development of cancer, we also know that vitamin A has what's known as anti-cancer uh, impact, right? Um, one of the things that vitamin A is very effective at doing is it's, it's effective at a process called apoptosis, so it helps your cells understand how to kill cancer cells. That's what apoptosis is. It's where it's programming inside your DNA, um, but it's driven by vitamin A, and it's also driven by vitamin D. So, so the two of these, so it's vitamin A and vitamin D play a role in allowing your cells to understand how to neutralize or kill cancer cells. And so deficiencies of vitamin A and vitamin D also linked to cancer. We also know vitamin C as it's potent uh, ability to scavenge or to, to pick up on free radicals and neutralize them. So, you know, we call that antioxidant capacity, right? It's a very potent antioxidant. Um, it also binds a number of different toxins. Vitamin C plays a role in hormone balance and hormone production, especially your stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline and noradrenaline. We also know that zinc you know, is an antioxidant. A lot of these things are antioxidants. Selenium is an antioxidant. Vitamin D is an antioxidant, etc. cetera. So um, we've got a lot of antioxidant capacity within these nutrients, but zinc also plays a role, just like magnesium I mentioned earlier in blood sugar regulation in insulin. Zinc is the center of insulin. So it basically, it helps your body produce insulin and it makes that insulin work properly. And if you're not if you don't have adequate zinc, it's very, very difficult to control blood sugar, which makes it, again, sugar feeds cancer. So very, very important nutrient as it relates to that. And then we also have the B vitamins, and these are super critical for proper metabolism of estrogens. So this is where we get into estrogen. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, let's make some room here. The metabolism of estrogen, so we, you know, estrogen is not one thing. Um, estrogen is multiple hormones. We don't just make one estrogen, it's just estrogen. We make estradiol, we make estrone, we make um, uh, estriol. 
There's also different versions of estrogen that, that are hydroxylated or uh, methylated versions of estrogen. So some of these versions of estrogen though are more carcinogenic or more cancer inducing than others. So when our body produces estrogen and different types of estrogens, it goes through a pathway. Estrogens go through a pathway of breakdown. And some of these estrogens if you're deficient in B vitamins, if you're deficient in magnesium, then this breakdown is inhibited with, and so the estrogens that you form are more cancer-inducing types of estrogens. And so we're, we're, we're certain that B vitamins play a role in this, especially vitamin B12 and folate and vitamin B6 play a major role in methylating estrogen so that your body, again, can get rid of the, the, the cancer component or the cancer-inducing aspect of estrogen. We're also certain that magnesium plays a similar role, again, in, in helping to break down these estrogens into non-carcinogenic varieties so that your body has less of an opportunity at developing it. There, there were a number of years ago, there was a major study, the Health Women's Initiative study, I think it was 2002, somewhere in that neighborhood, where um, this study where they stopped, so what they were doing was trying to, to determine the risk of estrogen in terms of cancer. And when, when I say the risk of estrogen, I'm not talking about natural estrogen production as much as I'm talking about Estrogen, estrogen given from prescription medications. And so certain kinds of, of, of estrogen, so like in your birth control pills, as an example, a lot of women out there taking birth control pills. And so a lot of those pills contain synthetic estrogen, not natural, but synthetic estrogens. And they also contain synthetic progestins or progesterone. And so these taken synthetically, that this study showed that, that it increased the risk for the development of cancer to a huge degree. As a matter of fact, um, they had to end this study early because the, the result was so prevalently positive for the risk of cancer. Now, I think it was not very long ago, they went, scientists went back and reanalyzed that study and they found that it had less to do with the actual estrogen, it had more to do with the synthetic progesterone um, this is not common knowledge. A lot of doctors um, still really hammer estrogen as the major contributing factor, and that's not that it can't be. I, I would say that you know, birth control pill is not a good idea. Um, you're not the synthetic varieties of these birth control pills. They, they can be very dangerous and they have very uh, aggressive long-term side effects, aside from the fact they can deplete magnesium and, and B vitamins. Uh, they can increase your risk for stroke. They can increase your risk for cardiovascular disease. Uh, but again, it's synthetic because that, you know, there's this whole field of science that's breaking out around hormones and estrogens and, and progesterones. And, and you've probably heard the term bioidentical. And so these are basically, these, these hormones are, are not synthetic. They're, they're, they, they, they are very, very much like the estrogens and progesterones that your body would naturally produce. And, and I haven't seen any convincing research that shows that bioidentical hormone replacement therapy increases the risk for this type of cancer. So again, this is if you're if you're looking at you know family history of breast cancer and and you're not sure, the best thing that you can do is work is work with your doctor and talk with your doctor, but work with somebody who understands this because if you're working with somebody who doesn't understand that, they're they're probably just going to tell you. Um, to avoid any type of hormones, and it may not be, that may not be the case. So again, I know some women, they even with a history of breast cancer actually go on bioidentical estrogens. And if they have a doctor who understands uh, estrogen metabolism, they can be monitored. Those individuals can be monitored to make sure they're not producing certain types of estrogen that are known for activating certain estrogen receptors that increase the risk for developing cancer. So my point in saying all that is, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Are synthetics maybe not the best thing? Absolutely, I think research pans out and plays that that is true, but some of the bioidenticals can be safe and effective. And so again, don't, don't necessarily disregard those that should you need them. But again, how do you define whether or not you need them? That's where if you're working with your doctor and you're getting your levels measured. Because sometimes, even though estrogen gets blamed because of that Women's Health Initiative, 
Estrogens can also combat cancer, and I think it's important to understand that too, because it, again, that Women's Health Initiative study gave all estrogen pretty much a bad rap, but some estrogens are very important to combat cancer. So there are, there are research studies coming out now that show that low estrogen in women can actually increase your risk for developing cancer. So again, I think the difference between synthetic and potentially bioidentical is important to make that note. It's important to make that observation. But again, back to nutritional deficiencies, we're very sure that these nutrients, okay, are, are super important from a preventative perspective because they help your body properly metabolize estrogen into non-cancer versions of estrogen. And uh, they also help antioxidant function and they help different pathways to help control blood sugar that prevents the feeding uh, of cancer. So again, very, very critical nutrients. And these are very common nutritional deficiencies as it relates to gluten sensitivity. As a matter of fact, you, you've probably heard me say this before, but zinc and vitamin D are, and, and B vitamins, particularly vitamin B12, uh, are the, in my experience, are the top. So D, B12, and zinc are three of the top four nutritional deficiencies that we find in individuals when they're first learning about gluten sensitivity. They're first finding out that they're gluten sensitive and they need to change their diet. You know, I've done 21 years of research in this area of nutrition, and this is what we see most commonly. Vitamin D, vitamin B12, and zinc that are on this list. Now, iron is another one that's very common, but there's not a whole lot of research linking low iron potentially to, to cancer um, in this way, not in breast cancer at least. So again, important to understand nutrients are very, very critical. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.